Mr. McNulty, your uh, extended welcome continues, and I welcome you as well. Uh, we are here primarily as a result of Monica Goodling's hearing in May. Ms. Goodling's testimony was consistent with what we've heard so far. After more than three months of investigation, and as much as the committee hunts, the evidence does not support the conclusion that U.S. attorneys were wrongly dismissed. What did we learn from Ms. Goodling? That Ms. Goodling, the Justice Department's former White House liaison, never spoke to Karl Rove or Harriet Myers about whether U.S. attorneys should be dismissed for partisan purposes. This was seismic news because the force behind this investigation has always been to see if White House partisanship lurked behind the U.S. attorney dismissals. Ms. Goodling's testimony was a long-awaited burst of sunlight helping to dispel that fog of suspicion. However, we are not here to discuss, as we might be, whether to bring the investigation of the U.S. attorney dismissals to a close. On the contrary, we appear to be meeting to discuss what information Ms. Goodling says she shared with you, Mr. McNulty, or your staff about the U.S. attorney dismissals prior to your Senate testimony in February, whether you were aware of that information, and if you were, why you did or did not convey some of that to the Senate. I find this a little odd for several reasons. First, this exercise is not about whether there was any real wrongdoing in the U.S. attorney dismissals themselves. It's not about whether the administration did anything other than exercise its privilege to dismiss presidential appointees who were serving, in fact, at the president's pleasure. Instead, it's about the after-the-fact steps the administration took to explain its position that there was no wrongdoing. So-called scandals about attempted explanations have become a subplot of Washington theater. Second, what Ms. Goodling said was actually a long way from saying that you, Mr. McNulty, had intentionally misled Congress in explaining the department's actions. Finally, I find today's hearing a little odd because our staff, along with the Senate staff, interviewed you long ago specifically about your Senate testimony. Following your interview, the majority made no urgent calls to bring you before us for a hearing. That call came only after Ms. Goodling was thought to provide some additional dry grist for the press mill. This hearing is really about another innocuous explanation of yet another issue overblown by premature speculation.